All right, welcome back, fellow scientists. So today we want to talk about DNA replication. Um, to remind you where we've been, we found out that DNA was the genetic material. We determined the structure of DNA. So now what we want to do is find out how DNA works. One thing that DNA has to be able to do is it has to be able to copy itself. So basically all DNA replication is, is taking this copy of DNA and making a carbon making a photocopy making a carbon copy of that of that original strand now notice that uh, this is this is true to life this is a double helix right and a's bind with t's remember shargaff's rules from the video right so yellows bind with greens and c's bind with g's so blues bind with reds um, but anyways the basic process of DNA replication is just taking one strand and making a second strand. Now, when would we need to do this? Why would we need to do this? Well, we already know the process of mitosis and meiosis for that matter. We want our daughter cells to have, in the, in the case of mitosis, the exact same DNA as our parent cell had, right? Now, we already know that this is accomplished when during the cell cycle. Ha! If you said S phase, you are correct. Remember, S stands for synthesis. What are we synthesizing? We're synthesizing DNA. So basically, we already know when this happens. We already know why this happens. Now we're going to look at the mechanics of how this happens. All right, so to do that, I'm going to draw three pictures. I would like you to draw them along with me in my notes, in your notes, rather. And there's going to be times when I ask you to pause the video and to fill in your notes and then restart the video and then see if, if your predictions are correct, OK? So to start off, we need to have um, a kind of a before picture of our DNA. So this is before. Okay, and so I'm going to draw a double helix, uh, well I'm going to try to draw a double helix, but I'm going to leave this space kind of in the middle, and you'll see why here in a little bit, but just notice that in, in real life, all of the DNA is a double helix, and there, there is no space, there is no flat part right here like I'm drawing, it's all... It's all kind of interwoven together. Um, the reason why I want to leave the space is because I want to label the bases that are in this space. So we'll say that this top strand has the following bases. And this is no particular order. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. So we'll do A, G, T, C, G, T, A, T, T. Now, if this were a perfect replication, then all of these would be evenly spaced. And yeah, anyways, so here's where I'd like you to pause it, and I would like you to try to use our complementary base pairing rules. You can rewind and you can review those from the from the beginning of the video if you want. But use our complementary base pairing rules to fill in this other strand, the bases on this bottom strand. Okay, so go ahead and pause it. All right, now check your work. So A's bind with T's, C's bind with G's. So wherever there's a T, we're going to write an A. Wherever there's a C, we're going to write a G. G, C, A, T, T, A, A, A. There you go. So this is what our DNA looks like before DNA replication starts. All right, so now we're going to draw a picture of during DNA replication. All right, and so for this, we're going to, again, have part of our double helix. But then we're going to draw a big, what we call a replication bubble. And then this is going to be a big replication bubble. And I'll explain that here in a second. Um, but then we're going to put our original base pairs on the top and on the bottom. So we're going to have A, G, T, C, G, T, A, T, T. There, that's a little bit more evenly spaced. And then down along the bottom again, you can pause. Well, I guess it's written up here, so anyways. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, T, C, A, G, C, A, T, A, A. Now, as you remember from our last video, normally these bases are held together by hydrogen bonding between the bases, right? But with DNA replication, we need to separate those bases. There's a special protein that does that that I'm going to draw right here. And this is a protein. Remember, proteins are the workers. 
This is a protein called DNA helicase. DNA helicase. DNA helicase's only job is to unwind our double helix, is to break those hydrogen bonds in between the base pairs. So DNA helicase unwinds the DNA or unwinds the double helix. DNA. Right, and that goes over here too. And so what DNA helicase does is it just starts somewhere on the DNA that needs to be replicated and it just moves down the DNA strand. And we have one DNA helicase moving in one direction and we have another DNA helicase moving in a different direction. All right, sweet. So that's DNA helicase. Then we have a different protein, and that's called DNA polymerase. Right? So these blue circles are going to represent the protein DNA polymerase. And the name is, is fairly descriptive, right? We're making DNA. We're replicating DNA. DNA is a polymer, and then ACE tells us that it's an enzyme. It's a specific type of protein. So DNA polymerase's job is to add nucleotides to the three prime end of the growing strand. DNA polymerase, so we'll write that down. Adds nucleotides to the three prime end three prime end of the growing strand. And if you remember from the video with uh, Mr. Anderson from Bozeman Biology, right, we remember that the five prime end is the part of the nucleotide that has the phosphate, and then the three prime end is kind of the base of the pentagon, or it, it's the end that doesn't have the phosphate, right? So DNA polymerase, one of them is going to go one way, like this, and the other one is going to travel down the strand the other way, like this, and it's just going to make a new strand of DNA. So we'll draw that here, and then we'll draw that here, and it's just going to complementarily base pair. So pause it and see if you can figure out what nucleotide, A's or T's or C's or G's, going to go right here, what here, what here, what here, what here, and then same thing, what one's going to go here, what here, what here, what here, what here. So go ahead and pause it. All right, and then welcome back. So check yourself. So this is C, that's A, that's T, that's A, that's A. This is G, C, T, G, A, like that, right? All right, so that's DNA polymerase, and it's just going to go along. It's going to follow DNA helicase, and it's just going to it's going to replicate. It's going to make this strand just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, and it's going to follow. Remember our complementary base pairing rules. All right, so that's what it looks like during, and then after. So this is after DNA, this is the product of DNA replication. So we're going to have two strands of DNA. Uh, each strand is going to have an original strand, uh, an original half of DNA, and then a new half of DNA. The original is going to be in black, and the new is going to be in red. And so we'll, let's see if I can make this. And again, remember, actual DNA doesn't have doesn't have that flat spot, but I'm just including it um, to, so that we can have room to put the letters in. So there's our original half of DNA, and then there's our new half of DNA, and we can fill in the letters, right? So this is A, G, T, C, G, T, A, T, T, right? Complementary base pair. You can pause it and, and quiz yourself if you want. So T, C, A, G, C, A, T, A, A, like that, right? So that's half, and then we're also going to have something that looks like this. This is the other half of our original DNA. And then this is our new strand of DNA. All right, and so again, then our original piece of DNA had T, C, A, G, C, 
A, T, A, A for nucleotides, and then our complementary base pairs that match up with those A, G, T, C, G, T, A, T, T. Like that. And you'll notice that after DNA replication, now we have an exact copy. We have two exact copies. So we started off with this piece of DNA with this sequence. We used DNA, DNA helicase to unwind the DNA a strand. We used DNA polymerase to add nucleotides to the three prime end of the growing strand. And then we get the end product is two exact copies of DNA. Now each daughter cell can get one of these pieces of DNA and they'll have the exact same type and amount of DNA as the parent cell did.